when we're talking about or discussing the hazards um, of Auckland, it's good to put it in the New Zealand context. Uh, we're in the, the, the roaring 40s <coughs> as it is, so we're quite susceptible to flood hazards, um, cyclone hazards from north of us, and we're on the collision margin of two major continental plates. The main influencing factor for seismic hazard in New Zealand is obviously the collision of the two plates. In the North Island, we've got the Pacific Plate subducting beneath the Australian Plate, and in the South Island, we've got just down at Fiordland there, the Australian Plate subducting beneath the Pacific Plate. In the middle, we've got what we call strike-slip movement north of the Alpine Fault and the faults extending up through to Wellington, where basically the two plates are twisted and there's just a lot of pressure on the plates through that area. And what we saw occur in Christchurch over the last two years was extension of that pressure. From an Auckland perspective, it's key to note that we're 300 kilometres from the subduction zone, so that's favourable for us. We're in the, one of the lowest seismic, uh, seismically active areas of New Zealand. Because the Pacific Plate is made up of oceanic crust, it's a lot more lightweight than the Australian plate. So when it subducts down beneath the other plate, it melts a lot faster. But because of that, we actually get melting protruding up through the crust. And that's why we have a central North Island volcanic zone. And that's why we don't have them uh, basically down in the South Island. When you see large earthquakes occurring from across the, the central North Island, we often see that earthquakes happening at these two plate interfaces down here. And you'll see that they spread quite wide because of, across the central North Island because it's happening down here. The further we get up, the stress builds in the interaction between the two plates and we see some quite significant earthquakes potentially generated through here. Just to put it in context, I guess, of the Japan event that occurred in March of 2011, the tsunami event, there was a 9.0 magnitude earthquake on the subduction zone off the coast of Japan. This is essentially the same subduction zone that's off the coast of New Zealand. So scientists within the country now are reassessing the risk of tsunami to New Zealand. We have a changed view on the potential slip of this fault here extending up past past New Zealand in term, from a tsunami hazard, but also from an earthquake hazard. Just to reflect on that, this is a 10-year map of shallow earthquakes from across the country. From an Auckland perspective, you can see that we've had relatively low seismic activity across the Auckland region. Over the last decade, there's been quite a significant seismic network um, put in by GNS across Auckland to monitor the Auckland volcanic field. So this is inclusive of all of those earthquakes as well. So we're talking right down to the micro earthquakes that, that they've registered right up to the big ones. But to put that in context of Canterbury, before the magnitude 7, 7.1 earthquake in Christchurch, over 18,000 earthquakes recorded in the central Canterbury region. Now there is uh, in the order of over 28,000. And the reason that's jumped up from the one earthquake is we have improved seismic knowledge, we've got improved monitoring equipment and more equipment's been deployed there to actually be able to register those earthquakes. An actual fact from earthquake hazard perspective, we'd be looking at a higher risk from an eruption in the Auckland volcanic field than we would a large earthquake. In terms of an Auckland context with liquefaction, we're sitting on hard volcanic rock that's not susceptible to liquefaction and in other areas in the north and other areas where the volcanic rocks haven't intruded, we're sitting on ancient, and I stress ancient, uh, mudstones and, and siltstones and, and don't have that potential. There are locations which, uh, if we were talking about liquefaction, um, looking around the edges of the harbours and those low-lying areas which have been reclaimed also, so around the port, those sorts of areas. But in terms of the context of land that is potentially liquefiable, we certainly don't have a high, high as risk as Christchurch.